Welcome to the Trading Psychology and Mindset Podcast. My name is Ash Playstead and I'm your host. This show is all about the trading mind and training that mind, the one we bring to trading into the mind we need for long-term trading success. In this episode four, I'm going to dive into one of the emotions that drives life and drives trading, and that is the emotion of shame which to the surprise of many traders sits behind much of their trading problems. So let's head over and start the show. Now, shame. It is a concealed, contagious and dangerous emotion for traders. And as a self-conscious emotion, shame informs us of an internal state of inadequacy, uh, unworthiness, even dishonor, regret, and disconnection. And shame is a clear signal that our positive or rational feelings have been disconnected, interrupted. Another person or a circumstance can trigger shame in us, but so can a failure to meet our own ideals or standards. And most dangerously for traders, Past negative emotional conditioning can get triggered before, during, and after the act of trading. And given that shame can lead us to feel as though our whole self is flawed, are bad, or subject to exclusion, it motivates us to hide or to do something to save face. So for a trader, shame often leads to the impulse of fight flight, which regards the risk of trading with money on the line to an uncertain outcome as a risk to life. So it's no wonder that shame avoidance can lead to fear or greed responses that attempt to mask its impact. Now, shame is also often confused with guilt, an emotion we might experience uh, as a result of wrongdoing, about which we might feel remorseful and wish to make amends. Where we will likely have an an urge to admit guilt or even talk with others about a situation that left us with guilty feelings, it's much less likely that we will broadcast our shame. In fact, we'll most likely conceal what we feel because shame, unfortunately, does not make a distinction between an action and the self. Therefore, with shame, bad behavior is not separate from bad self as it is with guilt. Now, in trading, which, as we know, is an uncertainty risk-based endeavor, real or imagined, might trigger, that trading environment might trigger a shame response. One may, for example, attack oneself as being inferior in competitive endeavors such as trading, or even believe that others will become aware of some concealed flaw. Um, How often as a trader have you struggled to explain that to people who don't trade? Shame will be felt when we anticipate being viewed as lacking or inadequate in our intellect, uh, our appearance, or our abilities and competencies. Now, for example, I'll talk for a moment about shame in one part of life and how it affects trading. So, uh, I, in the past, I had a woman, a client, who had gained weight. This came about as part of our discovery and had difficulty leaving her house because she wanted to avoid the shame that was triggered by being in public. Now, because she had devalued herself and her expectation was that others would judge her harshly, these feelings of shame clouded her ability to execute her proven trading system despite the knowledge that it actually worked. And as it became apparent to her and and we worked on fixing, it's because the act of trading triggered those past emotions, that past emotional condition into the trading environment and continually corrupted her decision-making. So incredible as this sounds, it's not uncommon in traders I work with. Now, also attacking others often serves to disown what the shameful person feels. And this is really interesting in trading. Because in order to escape shame's self-diminishing effects, expressing contempt towards another person or shaming them relocates one shame in the other. Now, however, in trading, there is no other, so the shame tends to get unconsciously turned inwards. A man who anticipated being judged as inadequate, for example, would manipulate his own self-esteem by denigrating himself. How do we know this? 
Well, we all have our own inner critic. You know, that voice that's always chattering away to you, that inner voice that constantly chatters away. Now, when shame is involved, this inner voice can get very loud and very damaging. So when one becomes weak or self-conscious and needing of approval, it becomes very tempting to blame any failure on the source of the shame. Now, relocating one's own shame in another person, as I mentioned, that's a typical self-protective maneuver amongst naive traders, okay, early on in their journey, since at the core of this naivety about the self is internalized shame that is being denied consciousness. It sits outside the uh, trader's conscious awareness. So needing to hide this devalued sense of self, these naive early stage traders and even more experienced traders, I may add, can appear a little self-inflating or a little entitled and provoke within themselves further internal conflict, which inevitably leads to inflaming the problem rather than facing up to it and mastering it. And of course, it's not the trader's problem because it's outside their conscious awareness. They don't know what to do. And this is where I end up doing a lot of my work, helping to unveil and reveal the source of this inner conflict and then get to work uh, repairing it. Now, shame is also contagious if you inadvertently take on what I would call the lethal projections of shame from a, a partner, for example, or a family member, especially one who is abusive, physically or emotionally abusive. Now, in this same way, shame is especially difficult, if not toxic, for children because it is an emotion that is concealed, especially by the victims of aggression or abandonment or abuse. Now, the anticipation of shame by peers creates anxiety in a child if he or she is the victim. Uh, the victim of bullying. Now, I've discussed this in a previous episode, you know, called Do Bullies Really Have Low Self-Esteem? And this shame can be experienced as such a negative, intense emotion of self-loathing that it can lead one to disown it. And this manifests in children quite often. And in the case of the one who acts like a bully, essentially gives it away by evoking the emotion in others. So when you see kids who bully or tease and also Uh, this plays out in adults as well, we can easily figure out what makes kids ashamed. And these other kids become highly skilled at triggering the emotion of shame in peers. And this is what makes shame such a contagious emotion. Now, it's also more dangerous than that. And I'll talk about why in a moment. Now, that's where shame can be contagious between family members and children can take this into adulthood and it manifests in trading. They're also, uh, kids this is, subject to the transmission of shame when they're related to someone who is behaving shamefully. So when children are emotionally or physically abandoned, um, abused or neglected, they often take on the shame that belongs to the adult who left or hurt them by assuming that it's them who are in fact bad, right? Some children behave after this in ways that make them culpable for the shame that belongs to their parents. Now, this sticks with the person into adulthood and explodes into consciousness in the trading endeavor. Now, it's primarily, uh, this happens primarily due to the inability of our rational mind to deal with the intense emotions of real life trading with money on the line. And this is where it gets super, super interesting and important, is the connection between the act of trading, that high pressure, high stress act, with our past emotional conditioning, particularly in this case, shame. Now, the brain looks to the past for ways to deal with intense emotions. This is how the brain works. And unfortunately for the trader, Past emotional conditioning of shame is instantly triggered and often below conscious awareness. So without the proper training, proper mind training, this will lead to the blowing up of accounts and soon enough, uh, the trader leaves the trading arena despite actually being quite competent and quite skilled. Now, on the other hand, uh, the flip side of the kids feeling the shame, often parents can experience intense shame because of the behavior of their children. Since an ideal as a parent is that children will represent one's best efforts and merits, a child who fails to achieve desired goals, whose ever behavior is an embarrassment, 
reflects negatively and evokes a shame response. Now, some parents deny any culpability in the misbehavior of their children in an attempt to disown their shame. And again, this plays out in trading. So have a think about where this might fit into your own life and past. Now, any situation that devalues the self and triggers shame can also trigger anger or rage. Now, this includes situations that might incite envy, stir up comparisons, evoke fear of abandonment, or rouse fantasies about a rival's relative happiness. I mean, how often do we compare ourselves to other traders in chat rooms and so forth? Now, this is very, very destructive. So that anger experienced by a trader who is shamed, it can become like an all-consuming poison. And it occupies a great deal of conscious thought, far too much. And of course, it normally shows up as revenge trading. You know, this is the result of attacking our emotions after the fight flight response is triggered. It happens at an unconscious level. But if one person who is consumed by shame manages to transfer the shame to another, then that person will experience its overwhelming toxic repercussions. Now, shame, when it is taken on by a partner or a loved one or friend or even a stranger, can physically and emotionally make a person ill. Now, I've actually worked with traders who experience the symptoms of being physically ill when under the stress of trading and have sort of just as accepted it as that's the way it is, where in reality, It's a result of past emotional conditioning around shame. And the good news is that that can be worked on and and fixed. So regardless of the trigger, when shame is experienced, the deterioration of an esteemed sense of self can be really devastating. And in addition to the typical emotions that accompany shame, such as anger, envy, rage, anxiety, we can also trigger sadness, depression, depletion, particularly around energy, loneliness and emptiness as a result. And this is where shame can become truly dangerous. When shame results in self-attack, right? It can be overwhelming and it can negatively color how you view yourself and how you assess the prospect of recovering your own self-esteem. Now, you can imagine how overwhelming this would be to someone trying to trade for a living. Now, even so, people do recover from experiencing shame and they learn a great deal about themselves if they can step back, particularly if they can step back and take a look at what is going on within them. And this is really where shame exists as an emotion to inform and teach us. And as with all emotions, shame requires perspective since it is placed in the context of our environment and current concerns. So the shame is from the past, but it ends up flowing over to current situations. However, our response to shame, particularly in the trading environment, is shaped by all of our emotional memories of when it was previously experienced. I'll say that again. Our response to shame, particularly in the trading environment, is shaped by all of our emotional memories of when it was previously experienced. And that's where the work Uh, can be done, of course. So the accumulation of emotional experiences that reside in our memory script and our responses when a particular emotion is activated in the present. So for the most part, these neat little packages of emotional memories influence our decisions and how we govern our lives, right? Anyway, in any case, shame serves the purpose of motivating us to save face. And therefore, one must always be aware of the inclination to hide when emotion is triggered, because human beings, we don't like facing up to those parts of ourselves that make us uncomfortable and shame fits that bill. And this hiding often accompanies behaviors that are themselves a trigger for further shame, such as addictions, uh, compulsive behaviors, harsh self-criticism or self-denigration. Or in the trading as I, uh, world, as I said, it's FOMO, it's revenge trading uh, and those types of behaviors. So Self-observation that is often prompted by shame and felt as regret provides an opportunity to learn, to change, to improve, or do something differently the next time around. And this, my friends, is where the opportunity of shame presents itself. So if you've experienced any of the symptoms of shame in your trading, good news, it's not your fault and it can be fixed. And it is pointing you exactly where you need to look and get to work on developing yourself. Now, I hope you found this information valuable, this episode, fellow traders, because remember, 
Shame is an emotion we all have hardwired into us because it always has and always will serve a purpose in life. However, in trading, it can be very destructive. So recognizing this and working on it is essential in establishing the right trader state of mind. Thanks for joining me in this episode. I will see you on the next episode of the Trading Psychology and Mindset Show.